the Voice of America presents Jazz Club USA. The Voice of America presents another in the series of programs designed to bring you jazz at its best. Here's your commentator and host, the well-known jazz critic and composer, Leonard Feather. Hello, and to all you jazz fans all over the world, greetings and modulations. Today on Jazz Club USA, I have a little surprise for you. At least, I think you'll agree it's a surprise to hear a bunch of girls playing like this. Believe it or not, those are seven girls with Gene Starr on trumpet, Lana Himes on tenor sax, and Marjorie Himes on vibes. And I thought it might be interesting to turn over the entire session today to music by the ladies, some of those talented feminine stars who have graced the jazz scene in recent years, proving that American jazz is by no means a male monopoly. I guess the girl musician's philosophy is expressed in the title on this next number, recorded by bass player Vivian Gary and her quintet, a woman's place is in the groove. name is Ginger Smock. Williams on trumpet. Winnie Beatty on piano. And of course, that's Vivian Gary herself, the leader on bass, with Dodi Jeschke on drums. That little gathering of feminine jazz stars took place in Hollywood. 
But the most famous of all girl jazz musicians, of course, is the one who's usually to be found around New York, and namely Mary Lou Williams. Mary Lou has been making records now for about 22 years, and she is still striving constantly to make her style more modern, more fresh, and more interesting. Here she has the assistance of Mary Osborne on guitar and Margie Hyams on vibes, with Bridget O'Flynn on drums and B. Taylor playing bass in The Blues at Mary Lou's. <laughs> Shortly after she recorded that number, Mary Lou Williams assembled another all-girl group for a record session. Again, she had Mary Osborne and Margie Himes, but this time the drummer was Rose Gottesman, and the bass player was June Rotenberg, a really remarkable musician who divides her time between playing in the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra and sitting in on jam sessions. This is Mary Lou Williams on her own composition, Boogie Misterioso. Thank you. 
Mary Osborne, the guitarist you heard on those last two sides, is an outstanding and attractive young artist who got her first inspiration to play the electric guitar when she met the late Charlie Christian. Mary has played with several name bands, such as Russ Morgan's and Joe Venuti's, but more recently she's been featured on records with her own trio, and an interesting product of that outfit is a record called Mary's Guitar Boogie, on which Mary starts out by giving her impression of how the guitar used to be played back in the ragtime era. Now Mary shows how the guitar managed to fit into the boogie-woogie phase of jazz. One of the major feminine jazz discoveries made during recent years was Beryl Booker, who played in Philadelphia nightclubs until Slam Stewart discovered her and brought her to New York as a member of his famous trio. Beryl combines harmonic subtlety with a wonderful beat and a sort of sense of musical humor. Here is the Beryl Booker trio with Mary Osborne on guitar and June Rotenberg on bass in Low Ceiling. <laughs> Thank you. 
Beryl Booker's work has sometimes been compared with Errol Garner's, although personally I feel she has even more originality and variety than Errol himself. Anyway, it's interesting to compare their styles, as you may notice when you listen to this solo by Beryl of a beautiful old tune, I Wished on the Moon. Just in case you're beginning to get an idea that all the girls can do is play rhythm instruments, such as piano and guitar, I think I ought to point out that every once in a while you come across a young lady who can blow a horn or write an arrangement with the best of them. An outstanding example is Melba Liston, a trombonist and arranger who has worked with Dizzy Gillespie and other top bands. Here she is first as a trombone soloist on Mischievous Lady. That was Melba Liston on trombone, and now here's an example of her writing, an original composition and arrangement very much in the Duke Ellington mood, played by the band that Melba was working with at the time, Gerald Wilson and his orchestra in The Moors. <laughs> Thank you. 
Probably the most glamorous figure among the feminine jazz stars is Hazel Scott, the pianist who became famous swinging the classics. Hazel has appeared in Hollywood in such movies as Rhapsody in Blue. She's had her own television show, and I'm pretty sure she's the only jazz pianist married to a United States congressman. In spite of all this, she hasn't lost touch with the real jazz feeling occasionally, and one of the best examples of her work reflecting an Earl Hines influence is her solo on I've Got the World on a String. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's session with the ladies, and I hope that it may have helped to convince you that there is some genuine talent on the feminine side of jazz. I'll be back with some male musicians next week, and in the meanwhile, if there are any artists, regardless of gender, whom you would like to hear on this show, don't forget to drop a line to Jazz Club USA, New York 19. This is your host, Leonard Feather, wishing you the best of tempos until next week when I'll be bringing some more exciting moments from the Duke Ellington Metropolitan Opera House concert that we introduced a few weeks ago. Jazz Club USA is a feature presentation of The Voice of America.